it just opened up so many things and so many girls. It was so much easier for me to make out with girls, have sex with girls, build a relationship with girls. Well, that was challenging as a language barrier for a high, high beginner, that long-term relationship is really hard with communication if uh, the girl doesn't speak any English. But it definitely led to more success. I was like, ah, oh, I just keep going with this, right? And then it dipped again. Experience. Всем привет and welcome back to another podcast episode of Vodka Vodcast with me, Connor Klein. This is the Zara Experience and today I'm speaking to you on a glorious October's afternoon in Odessa, Ukraine. It is October but we have an Indian summer here in Odessa. That's actually why I'm still here. The weather has just been too fantastic to leave. Uh, Odessa Mama doesn't want to let me go apparently this summer and in today's video I'm going to be answering a question that a lot of you, the viewers, have asked me over the last few months and that's because I speak Russian obviously, I learned Russian, it took me quite a long time to learn it, I speak about that in other videos, but does it get me more girls? And more importantly, does it get me more beautiful girls or could I come here rely on just speaking English and everything would be the same or even better maybe? So. A lot of you have asked me why should you go and consider learning Russian as a language to travel in this region in Eastern Europe and I made a few videos on that already but in this video I'm going to be answering the burning question what you really want to know you guys want to know will it get me laid more basically uh, or will it allow me to meet the girl of my dreams uh, when I come here to maybe to Odessa Ukraine maybe another part of the former Soviet Union where Russian is the most commonly spoken language now of course start the video the national language of Ukraine is Ukrainian uh, here in Odessa though most people actually use Russian in daily life so if you're gonna come to Odessa you can of course speak in Ukrainian if you've already learned Ukrainian but you should know that most things are going to be in Russian in this city when you're interacting with local people and it will be more likely that it's going to be their first language is Russian will be their first language and not Ukrainian if you go to other parts of the country it will be different of course Ukrainian is spoken uh, by the majority of Ukrainians and definitely in the west of the country it's by far the most useful language there so cities like Lviv but for uh, here in uh, Odessa then definitely you're going to use more Russian than Ukrainian. So the arguments in favor of learning Russian in terms of meeting girls and increasing that and maybe you've also increasing the quality of girls is the fact that this region Eastern Europe is the region with the lowest uh, English language skills that you're going to encounter all over Europe right. Uh, I saw a report on that it put it like the ranking of two out of five right so one being the worst five being the best so countries like you know the Netherlands I guess part of Scandinavia like Sweden would be like a five and then working your way down Central Europe is going to be like a three or a four and then when you get here it's a two and the comparison was made it's a bit like China so if you visit China it's going to be about the same level of English skills now of course younger people tend to speak more English than older people people in the cities tend to speak more English than people in the countryside so when you come here to Odessa it's like no one speaks English or something especially in the touristic center you'll be able to go to the restaurants people will understand your order they'll probably have a menu in English not everywhere but most places but when you go to speak to uh, local girls then I have to say that not most of them are not going to be uh, comfortable in English when they speak and also in Odessa of course there are a lot of tourists a lot of guys hitting on the girls all the time so if you open like 99% of the other tourists with something lame in English it's probably not going to allow you to open and uh, get to know that person that girl and in general just not that most of the girls are not going to have the English language skills in order to have any sort of meaningful uh, conversation with you right so it's hard for me to put a percentage on it I would say 75 percent maybe 50 to 75 percent of girls just for take you know Ukraine in general definitely um, in the city is going to be a little bit better of course younger people is going to be a little bit better so it just depends on um, what age demographic I think that's very important so if you're someone who is looking for uh, to meet women who are say maybe 30 to 40 years of age or you know 30 to 50 years of age that kind of age group then it's going to be really difficult if you're going to rely on English as the only language that you're going to use here if you're not going to use Russian or Ukrainian uh, if your age demographic is 18 to 30 then it's going to be a lot it's going to be easier for you but I've seen with my foreign friends who come here who rely on English and they told me wow it's really difficult um, 
the level of English is very low and most girls just don't want to um, engage them in conversation, don't seem uh, open to it or capable of it. Um, so that was their experience. Of course, I, I normally speak to people in Russian. I do have, meet lots of Ukrainian girls who speak to me in English as well, um, but I'm not dependent on that. So it's very hard for me to say the exact percentage, but looking at what my friends and what they encountered, only uh, using uh, English, it seems to be like 20%. So that's 80% of the population, boom, gone. You're not going to be able to converse with them. Now, it's not just that they don't uh, speak English or don't have a very high level. They don't have maybe that much practice. It's also the fact that if you uh, are in a city, especially here in Odessa, where there's a lot of tourists um, and there's a reputation for foreigners being engaged in sex tourism. Now, sex tourism, I usually have to say this uh, to explain in case your native language is not English. Not In English, sex tourism involves a commercial aspect. That's the United Nations definition. And that basically means prostitution. So their perception is a lot of the, the most of the foreign tourists that come here are here to engage in sex tourism, which is um, according to the United Nations definition, uh, commercial, so prostitution, or they're just guys who are here for a one night stand or just to uh, hook up with lots of chicks and then leave a week later, which to be honest is probably probably a lot closer to the truth. So if you open in English, like if you start talking to everybody in English, then you kind of almost inevitably get lumped in with that crowd, whether it happens to be true or not. So that's either be they presume that you're looking for a hooker or they just think that you're not serious, you're here for a few days and then you will leave. So they're not so interesting to get to know. Uh, in any case, that is a huge problem if you only speak English. Like if you were able to at least start the conversation in Russian, then you can make an attempt to distinguish yourself uh, from that group because I assume if you're coming here that you're not part of the commercial uh, sex finders group and like looking for prostitutes. Uh, well, on this channel, I don't advocate that. So probably if you're watching this podcast, that's unlikely that's going to be the main purpose of your visit here. So definitely that's a second big reason. And um, you know, you just like we started only with 20%, right? So then if only 20% um, probably have the, the English skills in order to engage with you. And then uh, in a city like Odessa, we'll say another 75% start off with the assumption that you're a sex tourist. And then you're left with what? And what are we down to? We're down to 5% of the girls in Odessa. That's not going to be as extreme in the other cities in Ukraine or in the former Soviet Union. I'm making it Ukrainian, very Ukrainian specific so far because I've been all summer uh, in, um, well, most of the summer in Odessa. I did go to Belarus uh, where probably my feeling was that isn't the same um, reaction you're going to get. But actually in Belarus, I thought the English language skills were even less. So um, to give you a bit of a comparison, right? So I'm saying that probably 20, 25% uh, won't be able to, well, only 25% will be able to speak to you in English here. And then probably if you're in Odessa, you're probably down to 5% of the population if you start speaking in English as a real option in terms of engaging with you at all. And if you go to other cities in Ukraine, it's going to be a lot better, like in Lviv in the the west of the country it's going to be a lot higher girls speak more english there in my experience probably in kiev as well they speak more they speak more english it seems uh, and then they have less of a negative reaction to you so there it's probably going to be somewhere between 10 to maybe 10 to 25 percent will engage with you uh, at the end of the day um, if you use english now the other countries in the former Soviet Union might be interested in. So Belarus, for example, uh, English skills to me seemed even less in Belarus. So if I'm saying 25% in um, a place like Odessa, Ukraine, probably in Minsk, it's going to be a little bit less than that. It's probably going to be 15, 20. And then uh, if you go to a smaller town like I went, you can go and you can look at my uh, travel vlogs from places like Brest, uh, Grodno, which have special visa-free regimes. So that's why it's probably interesting for you to look at those videos if you're considering visiting the country. It's another way to enter visa-free. Um, and those, it was even less. We seem to have some entertainment over there. I'm not really sure who's killing a cat or something with their singing. So yeah, in Belarus, it's not going to be the same negative reaction, but the English language ones are even less. So it's hard for me to say like 10 to 20% probably uh, best are going to be open to speaking to you there as well. Now, Russia in big cities, English is definitely a lot more uh, wide spoken. Um, in Moscow, St. Petersburg, it could be like 30 to maybe 30% upwards even, I would say. And there also the negative stereotype that you have in Odessa of foreign guys who come here is not as strong at all. Uh, so I would say there you could probably use, um, you'd have more girls to speak to. But basically I'm rambling on giving you all these stats, but the bottom line is like you're excluding a huge 
percentage of the population straight off the bat um, if you don't speak Russian. So obviously the counterpart to that is if you do speak Russian instead of being limited to uh, 20, whatever it happens to be, 5 to 30 percent of the population, uh, then you can speak to basically everybody in the country. So you, you treble at least uh, the number of people that you can talk to. So that's another very good reason uh, to to learn Russian and also it will of course you have more options so inevitably that's going to lead to more girls that you can speak to open to and possibly have some sort of relationship with. Now the next thing is um, Russian speaking in Russian even if they do speak English if you speak Russian everybody's a lot more comfortable uh, it's just a lot easier to build rapport with people if you understand not just that you can communicate with the words but also because in order to have learned Russian you're going to have to have learned a lot about the culture of the countries where the language is spoken and where you're traveling to and that just comes with learning all languages uh, so that's another reason so you're going to be a lot more familiar with the culture that again is going to make it easier to build relationships in the country and get you more girls for sure now another observation i guess i'm giving these some points so it's actually going to be four uh, so far is i think the quality um, of girls you will get will also be higher um, that's basically because um, well, most pretty girls don't have to work very hard to get guys path of least resistance yeah I can I don't have to learn English necessarily to get a guy or something that's probably that's the position of a pretty girl here they have lots of options and most of them well, most people in general just take the easy route so obviously if you can speak Russian probably the prettier girls on top of the fact you're gonna have to speak to more um, I would say the prettier girls are definitely going to be even more open to you if you speak Russian. So that's definitely going to get you more pretty girls, more beautiful women, for sure, that I'm sure of. It just opens up that particular, um, we'll say top percent, top five percent. It definitely has even more of an impact there. Um, so that's, uh, that's reason number four. I didn't think I would list these. So the fifth argument in favor of learning Russian in terms of meeting more girls, how can more girls, meeting more beautiful women, is the fact that if you speak Russian, you will avoid the scammers. You will get, I would say, 95% less chance of, of you meeting a scammer if you speak Russian than the guys who are dependent on English here. Um, that's been my experience. I've never been scammed by any girls in Ukraine. Uh, I know the first time I came and had all these experiences that I've outlined in the previous episodes of the vodcast, so episode number five, we did in great detail and I've actually made another one. I think it's going to be, I think it's episode 12 maybe I talk about. Anyways, don't go, go back and have a look. I'll try, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll list the previous em, uh, episodes in the description below the video and in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast and there you can go and look at the other videos that I made about my first trip to Ukraine and the terrible things that happened to me, to be honest. Um, you know, getting drugged and all this kind of stuff. Um, so go and check that out if you haven't seen those videos already. But at the time, to explain on my first trip, I didn't speak very much Russian at all and that left me very vulnerable. And since then, because I've worked on my Russian so much, I've never had an issue, like never. And n almost every single guy comes here, no matter how street savvy, streetwise they are, no matter how travel savvy um, my friends are when they come here, they've all been scammed at least once. I love to tell the story about how my friend uh, how some girls, they, um, I mean, he went on a Tinder date, the girl bought two girlfriends, uh, they went to an restaurant, he paid for the bill, they bought food, they then went somewhere else, this is in Kiev, in to an expensive place uh, that I've been to myself, famous, and uh, he said he sat down, he didn't speak Russian, suddenly he saw sushi coming out on the table, he's like, they've already eaten! <laughs> so it's obvious this is a scam just to, like, these girls are eating for the week, probably taking it home after them, so uh, he... It was the summertime, so it was like this kind of weather. He was in a t-shirt and uh, some jeans or a shirt. He didn't have a jacket, so he just said, faked having a, a business call, walked outside, never came back. And these girls sent him messages, nah. So that's how he dealt with it. But um, in general, you will avoid these kind of girls, the girls who, I mean, there are different gradients of scammers. Some girls just look to take advantage of the fact that you have more money, that guys pay the bill here in the local culture, and also the foreigners who come here also pay the bills in restaurants, and they will just look to milk you for a free meal. I mean, that's the wasting your time and a little bit of your money um, is the least of your problems. And of course, you have the major scammers, someone who might drag you, someone who might, you know, rob you, might get you beaten up. Um, or, you know, what happens a lot with marriage agencies, they just milk these guys for thousands of dollars, ask 
you to buy them stuff and all this kind of crazy stuff. None of that has ever happened to me. And one of the biggest reasons is that I speak Russian, so um, they tend to avoid me, I guess. They don't even bother uh, to target me for that reason because I'm obviously a lot more um, used to the culture and less likely to fall. And they have so many other victims lined up. Um, they just go into Tinder and they find these guys immediately and they just look for the guys who seem the most naive, who may be the first trip to Ukraine. And that's uh, unfortunately, a lot of you guys are going to fall, you know, foul of these kind of girls unless you're really careful. So by avoiding these kind of girls it actually frees up a lot of your time, obviously, because, you know, there's obviously an opportunity cost if you go on a date with a girl uh, and as opposed to another girl. So if you are attracting these kind of scammers, then that's also wasting your time. And, you know, you could have met someone who's a lot more genuine, a lot more decent, a lot better in that time that you were here if you were able to avoid that, that kind of either gold digger or scammer or something, right? I mean, if you're into gold diggers, then hey, then that's perfect for you. Stick to English, you'll meet more of them. Um, so there, there are the five reasons I would say overall why um, learning Russian gets you more girls and definitely gets you more beautiful girls. Now, I want to add a few, a few qualifications to the advice just get because it's not exactly 100% like you learn Russian and then all these options working up. It's not 100% um, well, it is a no-brainer for me overall, but I want to give you some of the, an, an idea of some of the girls who might be more likely to hang out with you uh, if you don't speak Russian. So the first kind of girls um, that would probably be interested in having, in hooking up with you maybe, or having a relationship with you, are girls that, um, yeah, are kind of learning English, of course, then they think they have this great opportunity to practice uh, with someone. Um, or maybe their girls are low self-esteem, so they seek validation in the fact that they're um, learning English and you're an English speaker and they get to hang out with a foreigner. Uh, and maybe they're also girls who are just not as pretty, not able to attract the more high level local guys. So they meet a foreigner, they know that Ukrainians are uh, world renowned for their beauty and that possibly if you come from a country uh, where yeah, girls are just not so pretty. So even a girl who's maybe average here or below average or maybe just ugly, it's a good opportunity for her uh, to look for an English speaking guy as opposed to a local guy who has, you know, options of a lot more prettier girls in general. And maybe you come and then they think, yeah, great, some foreign guy from Italy or Turkey or the US or Britain or wherever you happen to be from, Mexico. Uh, and this is really, really cool. Uh, and he does, I get to speak to him in English as an extra bonus. So those kind of girls probably more likely to be interested in someone who doesn't speak Russian. Now the question is, how much do you want those girls? Um, not so interesting for me personally. You draw your own conclusion, what kind of girls you're looking for. Now the second category of girls you're probably going to be more successful with if you use English are the girls that I alluded to earlier, which are the gold diggers. The girls who maybe want to leave Ukraine uh, for the guy who pays the most money and they're definitely going to just be opening open to they're also going to be open to be honest to local guys uh, with lots of money but if they really want to leave the country uh, then obviously they're probably going to go for a foreign guy uh, especially uh, if money is their main objective uh, maybe they want a very short-term relationship with you if you're paying for everything you're going to fly them to another part of the world that might be interesting for them but these are girls who are permanently financially driven now of course as i said they might also uh, behave that way with local guys uh, and local guys here who have money of course can also fly them to the Cote d'Azur or whatever as well maybe they even have their own place there so uh, it's not cut and dry that one but in general the gold diggers will uh, be interested in a foreign guy for for the for the dollar for the for the euro uh, so that's another category of girl that you're definitely going to have more opportunity maybe more opportunities it's not entirely clear if you have more just because you speak English but definitely they're going to be open uh, to you for that reason so I, but again do you really want those kind of gold digging girls a lot of you guys maybe do that's fine how about it it's free world have fun with them it's going to be some sort of light commercial uh, undertone to an agreement there like money for looks um, but that's freedom of choice if that's what you're into then um, yeah but for me personally that's not so interesting um, to be the only reason uh, just to have someone pretty and, and basically sponsor their lifestyle it's not the way I do things so if any of the gold diggers watching sorry so I appreciate that in general learning languages is not for everybody I was also really unsuccessful at them that's what I talked about earlier on in my channel before I started to focus more on traveling in Eastern Europe so yeah I can relate to you if you don't really think that oh festing all this time in language is going to be for me 
Um, it does take time, it doesn't require a certain amount of money, not very much. You'd be surprised how little you can learn language for in terms of money, uh, but definitely in terms of time, it is an investment and it's a commitment and you need to be motivated. So I understand that's a, a downside. I mean, it does take investment and if it's not something for you that you've enjoyed in the past then well actually then you should probably go and check out my course that's below in the description or at least get out my my uh, the training course that's for free down there and just take a look at it I mean that will hopefully inspire you my story will inspire you about how I learned more than 10 languages and that's one of the reasons I also speak Russian of course now if I were to sum this up overall I my sensei who I refer, refer to in episode five now he came here without speaking russian and he met a lot of girls but we're talking about someone who's in probably the top one percent in terms of competence in terms of social interaction and um, seduction that's why he's a seduction sensei um, but even he after a couple of trips here was like i need to learn russian really i need to learn russian because he found that the higher quality girls the prettier girls in general it's a lot harder um, for him because he was relying on English. Uh, these kind of, the girls who are like not as attractive or not as high status maybe in, a, especially in a city like Odessa, it was a very hard because there's always this assumption that, you know, he, he's a sex tourist if he comes here and um, he only uses English, just the, the whole foreigner vibe here. Also, I've referred to Sven from Belgium who I met here, a f you know, earlier on, I mentioned him in maybe two or three other episodes at this stage, uh, but he also said that this is a Belgian guy who traveled, you know, extensively around the world, um, seemed uh, pretty competent in terms of, you know, socially calibrated. But he said here was the only place in the world that he had been where being a foreigner was a disadvantage as opposed to an advantage. This city, not saying Ukraine overall, but this city. And it's because of that assumption if you open everything in English. So that's the experience of, you know, people who came here who were pretty competent and they relied on English only didn't uh, at that point invest in Russian and that was their response uh, so it's not just my experience of course I came here the first trip as I outlined and I didn't speak much Russian and I had like this series of calamities so Russian learning Russian definitely helps you overall definitely gets you more girls and most importantly also gets you more beautiful girls um, so that's my conclusion on that so now I'm gonna actually talk about something quite interesting because for me as a language geek and that's actually what happens when you are learning a language and how it can it will surprise you if you don't have as much experience um, basically I have to give a big shout out to my friend Ali Richards at IWillTeachYouLanguage.com because we actually discussed this and he said he had the same experience actually that he noticed when he was single and he was learning Portuguese is that when you learn the, the language in the beginning you get an enormous boost not just in what you can do so you go from zero to say very basic level right so this is gonna be interesting I think to a lot of you uh, when I polled uh, you guys on my social media team most of you who are interested in learning Russian uh, were at the beginner phases uh, not too many were intermediate or advanced so this is something for you or if you haven't started yet and you're just curious uh, because of this video and because of the title and because of what I've been saying over the last uh, few minutes about how it helps you get girls, more girls, and then more beautiful girls. Um, so in the beginning, you're gonna get a huge, 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 huge boost in confidence and capability um, when you start to learn the language. Because you go from zero to being able to do really basic things like order, uh, open up a conversation with girls, uh, not get scammed as easily, hopefully, um, by people who approach you. So that's a real reason to invest a lot of time um, just before your trip in learning the language. Just get up to a basic level. Honestly, you can do this in a few weeks. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a link below in the description um, to a new course that I've just um, actually made up from the conversation with Ollie because he thought this would be really great for you guys to actually have that. And I'm actually gonna have uh, a course down below for you guys to go and to learn your first um, essential Russian for coming on a trip where you're going to meet girls. So I think this is the most useful for you. And that huge boost that you get at the beginning uh, will help you no end, will just open up so many opportunities. Now, I want to go a little bit more in detail uh, into why that is. And what is a very interesting phenomenon, um, and it took me a while to figure this out, I've pondered over the last few years, 
I actually, um, I love Brazil. It's my favorite country in the world. I know at the moment I'm not talking about in this channel where we're dealing with Eastern Europe. And I learned Portuguese from zero to fluency in about two years. I was so motivated. I really want to learn Portuguese for my trips to Brazil in particular. I started learning Portuguese. I also got this huge boost in the beginning. I was like, wow, you know, compared to my first trip in Brazil, now my second, third trip, it's so great. It's so much easier to talk to girls. I'm hooking up left, right and center. Also because Brazil is very open as a country. I speak about that in uh, one of the previous podcast episodes where I deal with Ukrainians and are Ukrainian girls easy. Uh, you should go check that one out. I'm going to link that below as well. Um, Brazilians definitely are so uh, by anyone's definition and this was a huge boost and I was like yes learning Portuguese is the best thing I ever did and then I got to intermediate uh, Portuguese and intermediate if you've never learned a foreign language is like a really long process to get from that high beginner to low advanced it's like this huge plateau like plain a step since we're in uh, the former Soviet Union here and it just takes so long and it's, like normally you would expect to Okay, it doesn't increase very quickly in terms of maybe your competence or your success with girls, whatever. But actually, it took a dip and it took a very noticeable dip. And I was like, that's really odd. My Portuguese is so much better, but I don't seem, I seem to be having all these problems with communicating with girls. And I thought, is it confidence? Is it, you know, just I'm overcomplicating everything? And I was like, nah, I never really figured it out. And then later on, I said I learned to, to fluency in two years. Um, it came back up again. And then I found, okay, at the very end, it's like skyrocketed. But there was like this period in between where it's like shut up, boost, and then plop down and shoo, like this. So it wasn't even like it just picked up and then plateau and then up, like maybe you would expect, or a consistent linear graph. It actually went up, went down, and went back up again. And then at the end, yeah, definitely once I got to the fluent stage. Uh, but again, this took me like two years, and that's a big investment. And Portuguese was not hard for me to learn. So something like Russian took me a lot longer. Um, so I thought this was interesting at the time and you know, I've been learning Russian for the last few years and exactly the same thing has happened. In the beginning when I learned after that first trip when I didn't speak Russian very well at all, that first trip only just had very basic stuff uh, and then I learned it to like a high beginner level and it just opened up so many things. I was like, um, and so many girls, it was so much easier for me to make out with girls, have sex with girls, build a relationship with girls. Well, that was challenging because the language barrier for a high, in, high beginner, that long-term relationship is really hard with communication if uh, the girl doesn't speak any English. Um, but it definitely led to more success. I was like, oh, I just keep going with this, right? And then it dipped again. I was like, this is exactly what happened with Portuguese. What is going on here, right? Now that I'm back up, um, you know, my Russian has improved dramatically. I feel it's getting back up to that level again. It's already gone past where it was at the high beginner. And uh, now we're gonna shoot up to the stratosphere uh, a little bit further as my Russian gets better and better. Uh, but this whole intermediate phase was like really, really difficult and actually less than, led to me having less girls probably um, than I had when I was a high beginner. So that's really counterintuitive. So I've been pondering this and Ollie's told me he had the exact same experience. Um, when he was learning Portuguese as well and we were debating it and I was watching a um, dating coach um, Oresti Max who has a very popular channel you should go check him out I guess I'll link him below as well and uh, he was talking about like social filters and you know just being in your head and then it occurred to me what the real issue is is because when when you're learning a language that is is that when you're a beginner you don't have any of those social filters because you have such limited vocabulary and you just have to blurt things out really, really directly. Um, and you just say like, okay, we go to my place. Um, and if you're asked why, because we're gonna have sex, um, not necessarily the best thing to say, but it's better than what, you know, happens maybe if you try to be more subtle and you lose um, the, the, the flow of what you're saying. You have to hesitate, think about something. Uh, you're really direct and also you maintain eye contact a lot more. And that's something also I see Max talked about in his videos that I saw. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Uh, because you just say things that you don't have to think very much. You only have a few words that you're going to use in any situation. And you just maintain eye contact. And this is very strong. And especially here, I think in a culture like Ukraine or Russian, uh, which is going to be pretty similar uh, with that respect. And that's basically the reason is like you basically are very direct. You don't have these, you basically have these kind of blinkers on socially. Um, you don't have maybe in your own language, it might be harder even uh, to communicate and, and be that effective. So actually you're probably going to be better if you've gotten to basic 
a high beginner Russian than you are in your own native tongue. So that's another additional reason, I guess, um, to learn. It's a big reason to learn a little bit of Russian before you come here. And I mean a little bit, I don't mean just the, the pleasantries, but get to the high beginner level, like commit for a few weeks, boom, you can be at that level. It'll be easier than if you were speaking English or your native tongue, imagine that. Um, so that's definitely a big reason. And it's really interesting for me to see this phenomenon. Action, it's already happened to me twice. Um, so I guess the question is once you get over the high beginning, well, sorry, you got a long slog ahead of you as it goes down. But now that I'm aware of it, um, definitely if I learn third, I guess Ukrainian or something else in the region, maybe Serbian at some stage, I'll be really aware of this and be prepared for it and to take countermeasures. And I can also help you with that if you've already gotten to the intermediate stage about how you're going to cope with overcoming those issues that happen when you get the intermediate stage in a language. I think it's super fascinating. And you saw there in the graph, uh, this kind of up huge boost down plummets very hard in your ego believe me happened twice and then boom when you get back up to these more advanced uh stages in the language it takes off again so that's a huge incentive for you guys really it's huge go check out what i have below for you in the description uh you're really going to appreciate it if you come on a trip to former Soviet union you have that high beginner's russian it's going to transform things my sensei what he used to do here before he started learning russian was he would go and see, does the girl speak English? She doesn't speak English? Okay, next one. So there's kind of a little bit of a selection bias, right? So that you can create for yourself if you don't speak uh, Russian, of course, uh, and then you don't waste time with girls who don't really speak any English. And then you kind of focus on that, whatever, five, ten percent that's going to be open to speaking English with a foreigner. But if you want to have the full a la carte options, which, come on, guys, you want to be able to pick and choose and be open to meeting the, the as many girls as possible, many great girls as possible. And that's why I say learn Russian. It will help you get more girls. It will help you get more beautiful girls. And you're going to have a, well, you're going to have a great bloody time here. You're going to save money. It's like, it's, it's a no brainer. Just go learn Russian at the very least, a high beginner level. You'll thank me afterwards. If you enjoyed this video, you're here at the end of it. So you've definitely been engaged. Uh, I've entertained you at the very least. Strike the like button, squeeze the red subscribe button, of course, if you're not a subscriber, and make sure that you have what? That notification bell, hit it out of the park, because if you don't, then you don't get notified when I upload new videos here on YouTube. If you have come to a country in the former Soviet Union, or, and if you have learned Russian, tried to learn Russian, um, and you've thought it's either helped you or was a disadvantage, then please write a comment below the video because you won't just be helping me and my own knowledge and understanding, but you'll also be helping all those other guys who are going to come to Ukraine. We're creating this great community um, of people who comment, the people who comment constructively, of course, uh, below the videos, and it really helps. I can see the, the interaction there where people really help each other. That's fantastic to see. So um, we may even organize an event for those of you who want to be part of this community. Uh, one of you reached out to me recently on Instagram. So that's an idea. We'll be in Kiev. I'll let you know over social media. So definitely be following me on Instagram and Facebook, as well as here on YouTube for that. It is coming to sunset, not so far away. I'm going to enjoy this beautiful, beautiful Indian summer here in Odessa, Ukraine. Uh, I can't believe I got so lucky in October to see this kind of weather. It's really phenomenal. It's going to be like this all week, by the way. I try not to be too jealous. Um, so I look forward to seeing all of your smiling, enthusiastic faces for this part of the world, for Eastern Europe, for Ukraine. And I wish you the success in learning high beginners Russian and meeting more girls and meeting more great girls. Disvidanya Dopobachna from Desa Ukraine. See you in the next video. Ciao. Sar experience.